In Creole Parametric 9.0, there is a new tree called the Quilt Body Evolution Tree. And like the name implies, it's to give the user an understanding of the evolution of a model, how it was built up, if it contains a number of different quilts or bodies. So let's take a look at that. In a previous video, I talked about the enhancements to the model tree. In another video, I talked about the enhancements to the design tree. Again, this is a brand new tree. And to open up the new tree, you can do it from the model tree, from this icon. And in the design tree, you have the very same icon. And so when I click on it, here we have our quilts. Let me expand that. You can see all the different active quilts in the model. Actually, let me close this for a second so I can point out what happened when I opened it. If you take a look in my design tree, here we have the materials, there we have the annotations. I have one body that hasn't been added to one of the custom groups. And we have 16 quilts that have not been added to custom groups either. And you'll notice in here, we have both the active quilts, which appear in the purple color, plus there are a bunch of quilts that are consumed. These are the ones in the pink, light red color. And also there are a couple in gray because those are hidden. But anyhow, take a look at what happens to the quilts and the bodies in the design tree when I open up the quilt body evolution tree. I click on it. Okay, they're no longer listed in here. We no longer have the bodies or the quilts. And now we have four bodies. The bodies that were in custom groups are now all listed underneath the bodies folder. And here we have 15 quilts. Again, these are the active quilts. It doesn't list any of the consumed quilts. All right, if we take a look at the top of the interface, here we have an expand all button, and then we have a collapse all. I will expand all. Be aware you're going to see a lot of stuff in here. I will explain it in a moment. When I click on expand all, you now see this hierarchy under each of the quilts. And so you can see basically the quilts that contributed to that quilt plus the different operations that ended up creating them. And the reason that you see these different operations, well, they're necessary to understand the evolution of these different features. And also I have this icon selected, which shows or hides the contributing features. And these are contributing features that don't contribute to the hierarchy. I know it's a little bit involved, but I'm going to click on this icon to disable it. And the number of quilts in here actually decreased. You can see like quilts 6 through 14, they don't have any contributing features. These are quilts that actually came over from a copy geometry feature. But with these other quilts, you can see a number of the different contributing operations. Let me scroll down in the quilt body evolution tree. And you can see the same thing down here for the different bodies. We can see the features that contributed to the building of this particular body. And so again, the idea is that you can click on the different entities and understand how this was built, how it was made up. So it gives you an understanding of the design intent. You'll notice as I was clicking these different entities in the tree, it's also highlighting the snapshot in the graphics area. And I'll talk more about snapshots in a moment. You'll also notice that it is selecting the corresponding entity if it appears in the design tree. But anyhow, let me deselect everything. And I just want to mention the different features that show up in here. If you take a look, a bunch of the features that you're seeing in here pertain to different surface operations. So for example, here is a merge feature. There is a trim feature. I know down here somewhere I have a mirror feature. Where are you? Oh wait, let me make sure I turn on my contributing features. There we go. Now I see the mirror feature over here. And we're also going to have a thicken feature. I also have a solidify feature. So those are the different kinds of surface operation features that are going to appear in this list. If you have multiple bodies, well, also your Boolean operations and split features 
will appear in the list as well. But I don't have any Boolean operations or splits that were performed in this model. So that again is the contributing features. The next icon that we have over here that's turned on is auto showing the snapshot. So snapshots were introduced back in Creo 8.0. That's a way that you can click on a quilt and see how that quilt existed at the time that it was created before any operations might have affected it, like a trim operation or a merge operation. In other words, hey, see that quilt as it looked back in the past history. I'm gonna take the model and change it from shading with edges to wireframe. This isn't necessary for showing the different snapshots, but it will help in this particular case because a lot of my surfaces are internal to the model. Actually, to help it some more, I'm going to go to one of my custom groups and select the contained features. These are features that are reference geometry, like copy geoms and stuff. So. Now, when I select my different entities, like here I am in the quilts, let me select the button quilt. Hey, you can see the snapshot in the graphics area. All right, let's go to another quilt in here. Now, oh, let me go down in the list. Here we have the bottom body. Hey, it highlights the bottom body. It shows you the snapshot. Here we have the shaver bottom quilt. Let me go to the shaver top quilt. And so that way you can see with the auto snapshots turned on those different entities. Also, there's something that's called auto locate. So when I select one of these entities, it's going to select the corresponding entity in the design tree and or the model tree, depending on what I pick. Let me go back from a wireframe mode to a shading with edges. And now say I pick this particular surface in the graphics area. Here it's highlighting the relevant feature in the quilt body evolution tree, the design tree, and the model tree. Let me select another one over here, grab this particular feature. Hey, it is showing the style feature in all three of those. And again, here I pick this particular surface. Well, it is selecting the thickened feature in all of those. So the auto location and the snapshots very convenient for understanding what those different entities looked like during the buildup of this particular model and the last thing to show you and this pertains to all the different trees back in previous versions of creo you had to take a few steps in order to undock the different trees and move them around. Now you can just grab the upper corner and I can grab it. And now I'm displaying the quilt body evolution tree as its own separate tree. I can grab the design tree and do the same thing. And then I can choose to redock it back to where it was. Or I can grab this one and I can dock it into the bottom of the design tree so that it doesn't take up too much real estate in my graphics area. So again, very convenient function for working with all the different trees that you now have in Creo Parametric 9.0. So again, that is the quilt body evolution tree. Let me turn off the display of the quilt body evolution tree. Now you can see that we have the quilts and bodies back in the design tree. And if I turn off the display of the design tree, here we have our design items folder back in our model tree. So I hope you get to use the quilt body evolution tree and find it useful.